Let me tell you this. I began to think about all that fear that they had. All that fear that was upon them. All that fear did not bring holiness to the people of God. Hallelujah. You say, why is that? Because 40 days later, they went out and melted at their jewelry yeah. and all yeah. their gold down and they made a golden calf. Yeah. And I'm afraid a lot of folks in the modern church today has melted down their golden calf. Yeah. And they're so yeah. sweet and they're saying, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. And they're worshiping something else. Yeah.
church was born yeah. and the new covenant was given when Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and he began to preach about the heavenly Jerusalem and he began to preach about Jesus at Mount Zion hallelujah I know about Zion 3,000 souls died but at the day of Pentecost at Mount Zion 3,000 souls
Bible said his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Yes. And his dominion endureth through all, yes. all generations. Amen. 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 I pay for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. And Jesus, and the, we know as the model prayer, Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven. Hallelujah on earth. Hallelujah. And then he closed out that prayer when he said, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just fine, just fine and dandy right now. And you 
may leave this place today and you may feel all the hell come at you right. and it may feel like yeah. the world just crashing in on you. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you this morning, you need to leave here understanding you're not just some ordinary person. You're not yeah. just some regular run at the meal, Joe. You are a part of the kingdom of God. You are the kingdom. And even though the world, even though the devil, even though hell may throw everything at you, you are built upon a foundation, upon the rock. And even down when the shaking comes, you're going to keep standing. Somebody say, well, you mean we're all part of the kingdom? Yes. If you've been saved and born again, yes. there's no qualifications, there's no hoops you have to jump through. I heard of a church here a while back. I think somebody here was telling me about it. Still kind of shut down. I think it's time now for churches to open up. Amen. You're right. I mean, I didn't understand it when it shut down. I don't understand why it's still closed. Yeah. People need the church. Yeah. People need each other. Yeah. People need to be assembled together. Now, there may be some here that don't see the importance of that, but you need to study your Bible a little yeah. more and understand why it's important to be assembled together. We draw our strength off the Lord, and we draw our strength off each other. Yeah. You can't shut the church down. When this thing hit, it gave them a good excuse to stay home now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could stay home now, watch the service on their in their pajamas, uh, and yeah. eat their breakfast. Let me tell you something. God did not design the kingdom to be like this. Yeah. Yeah. And now I heard this week, our wonderful governor. Oh, I listened to him a long time. I kind of missed him. And I listened to him on the radio the other day. Now they're, they're bribing people. And I heard they're going to give uh, how many millions of dollars to, in a drawing if you get your shot. Now something has to be wrong somewhere. I'm not going to stand here and tell you not to get a shot or to get one or whatever. That's not my business. That's between you and the Lord. I just know I'm not. I want that poison in me. I don't want nothing the world's got for me. I know too much. I don't have a big college degree. I'm not the wisest man in the world. But what I do have is a revelation from the heavens through Jesus Christ. Yes, he still gives revelation to those that want it. Hallelujah. And I want that poison. You drink free gas Amen. the rest of your life, free groceries. I thought to myself, they've got to be something of this if they're going to grind it. But anyway, I'm not going to get on all that. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Hallelujah. I'm, and I'm not telling you my opinion either. Amen. You're right. It's not man's opinion. So don't somebody rail me over the coals. Preach it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Preach it. Tell them I'm telling you this morning, unless the church wakes up. That's right. That's right. And somebody told me about a church right here in the community. They don't even have invitation anymore. Oh. Now people say, well, what's the matter of invitation? What's it matter of invitation? That's the most important part of any service. That's the opportunity for folks to come to the Lord. Hallelujah. But they made it to where... If they that you don't shake hands, you don't hug, you wear your mask, you come in, you and you leave. And I don't know what kind of worship you got going on, but I, I'm just assuming according to the word of God, that is unacceptable in the nostrils of God. Hallelujah. We're not made to be bound down and tied up and bound by you know the Bible speaks of the dog being muzzled. Yeah. 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 And I don't want preacher that I'm going to muzzle and put a hand in the Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the pastor.
pastor says, if you're under conviction to be saved, you can pick up a business card in the foyer, and you can call and set up an appointment. You know, we're talking about somebody that's under conviction on their way to hell for eternity to burn in a lake of fire in a literal torment of flame. And you're going to say, well, you just call, we'll set up an appointment. Really? You, what you need to do, Pastor, is just lay your book down, get out of the business. Yeah. And let somebody that's called get up and preach yeah. the Lord of God. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you, it wouldn't do me to be in that church. I'll tell you that. And I know where it's at, they're not going to bite me no way. <laughs> Which is all right with me. I'm okay with it. I'll stay right here until people say it's time to leave here. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, I mean, you, you, you know, devil, you think I'm going to stand in front of somebody that's under conviction, dying on the way to hell, yeah. and it's my duty and my responsibility along with every other Christian yeah. that's been yeah. saved and born again. I'm not going to tell you to wait. As a matter of fact, the invitations I give, I always tell folks, you could draw out your last breath Amen. in the next few seconds. Yeah. Your heart could be in its could last happen. beat in the next few seconds. Yeah. You're not gonna, I'm not going to set up some appointment with you to we may not live to see that appointment. We're going to get down on our knees on this old fashioned altar. And we're going to do it now. And we're going to call on the name of the Lord. Well, today is the day of salvation. God help some of our back. And I'm going to tell you, if our church continues in the path it's going, when this Satan comes, it's going to fall to the the news. I don't care if it's a liberal news. I don't care if it's a concern. You can't believe nothing anybody says. And I'm going to tell you, young people, I'm going to tell you, you better get your house stable. You better get your life stable. Because I'm telling you, we're coming into troubled waters. And there's a lot of folks think they know more than a lot of other folks. A lot of people think they know more than the Bible. they got a better way of figuring out. I'm going to tell you something. If you're here like that this morning, you better get your mind made up. You better start setting your affections on things above. Because I'm telling you, there's a shaking that's coming. I, I say there's another shaking that's coming. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you because the Bible says it. I read it this morning. There's another shaking. It's the wise man that builds his house on the rock. Amen. Right. But it's the foolish. Hallelujah. Amen. Whose minds have been darkened and their eyes have been blinded by the enemy. Yeah. And they're trying to build in a world that's so unstable. Yeah. In a world, and I'm telling you folks, listen, and I believe, I've sensed it, I've sensed it in my own life in the last several weeks. And I've sensed it here with folks. And when you've got the spirit of discernment, you pick up things yes, real quick. Yes, yes. And you can't hide things from the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I sense this. There may be some several folks here, and you're ready just to give up and throw in the towel. You're ready to quit. And maybe some have just grown cold. And you remember how it was when you got saved. You had a fire in you like, I mean, they could nobody stop you. You are so excited. But now look. Now look. That fellowship has been broken. That relationship is not what it once was. But I'm telling you today, here's some good news. God's in the restoration business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the church better make up its mind. Now I sense in the next few years that the Lord did this, the church is going to be empty and out. Empty and out. And I'm going to tell you, and it's already begun. There's folks that's not here that once was. 
And somebody says, well, I mean, we can make up excuses for people all we want. We've got to get down to the fact of the matter. We've got to get down to the truth and the root of the whole problem. Amen. And I'm not telling you to beat somebody down. I'm trying to help you. And I'm trying to tell you through the word of God today. Hallelujah. The Bible's got a remedy for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Paul said to the Galatians, be not weary in well-doing. Because if you keep holding on to that unseen hand, hallelujah, be not weary in well-doing because in due season you will reap if you faint not. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58, Paul said, therefore my beloved brother, be steadfast. Somebody say, he means me. He means me.
Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man told me this week, said, you're getting older. Look, I get some age. I said, I'm not that place yet. I'm still young. Hallelujah. Amen. But I'm going to tell you this morning. I found in him yeah. a friend that will stick closer than any brother. Yes. I found in him. He's my stability. I said, he's my stability. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm built upon that rock. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you to lose so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get the piano player and the songwriter come. That's key. <laughs> Hallelujah. Angie, Angie, can you play an invitation? Would you care to do that, please? Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Let me tell you this morning. The Bible tells me in Psalms 55, I believe it is, God will never suffer the righteous to be moved. That's right. That is a promise. Yes, it is. I'm going to tell you by experience. When it looks like that everything's on top of you, and the devil's just smothering you, and it feels like it's all over. Haven't you found in those moments he shows up just right on time? Every night, I'm just saying for you, saying every night, 